Good morning. Let us all stand and greetings to those of you who joining us via Facebook at this hour. The Bible says, let everything, come on, that hath breath, praise the Lord. You know what that means? If you are breathing, there ought to be a praise in your spirit. If, if you are inhaling and exhaling, you ought to be able to give God, come on, let's pause right here and just give him glory for all that he's done. Let everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us. And on behalf of our First Lady, our entire church family, the prophet asked, is there a word from the Lord? And there is a word from the Lord. We greet you and we thank you for joining us. And we thank God for your presence. In light of Black History Month, today we remember the names Richard Allen, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Thurgood Marshall, Dr. Martin Luther King, Fannie Lou Hamer and Ella Baker. And every Sunday this month, we're going to remember the names of those persons who paved the way for us and left an indelible mark. And we are indeed grateful. We are thankful this morning to have our morning 8 o'clock worship team with us. And they're going to lead us in worship. Um, and afterwards, I'll come back with the morning sermon. For those of you that have your Bibles, I ask that you turn with us to 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 1 through 2. I'm reading today from the New Living Translation. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I want you to remember what I said. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. That means if you're breathing, you owe God a praise. Your name is Rex. 
times, we bless your name. In bad times, we bless your name. When we feel good, we bless your name. When we do not feel good, we bless your name. Thank you. From 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 1 through 2, there is a word from the Lord this morning. I'm reading, reading from the New Living Translation. Elisha replied, listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. By this time tomorrow, in the markets of Samaria, six quarts of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver, and 12 quarts of barley grain will cost only one piece of silver. The officer assisting the king said to the man of God, that couldn't happen even if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. But Elisha replied, you will see it happen with your own eyes, but you won't be able to taste to eat any of it. The officer assisting the king said to the man of God, that couldn't happen even if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. But Elisha replied, you will see it happen with your own eyes, but you won't be able to eat any of it. I want to talk from his subject this morning, the what? Prophetic word by this time tomorrow. I'm going to preach in a minute the prophetic word by this time tomorrow. God, we thank you. We've heard your voice. And we've placed the sermon in your hands. And now, God, it is our prayer that you would release it to the listeners, those who are with us here in the sanctuary and those who are watching via Facebook and those who will watch via YouTube as well as Roku. We ask, oh God, that you would open the hearts and minds of the listeners that they may receive the word of the Lord. It is in the strong name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. In Mark's gospel, Mark chapter 4, a parable is told that is worth mentioning. I must admit that I am proceeding with caution because we are warned or were warned in seminary never to introduce scripture with scripture because if you're not careful, the introductory scripture will overshadow the main text. And so I'm going to hit it and then move forward. Mark 4, Jesus tells the story of a sower who went out to sow his seeds in the garden or in the field. Oddly, in this parable, Jesus comes back with an explanation of the parable, which is quite unusual. Here's what he said as a way of explaining the parable. Then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others like seed sown on rocky places hear the word and once they receive it, they receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word. Here it is. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for things to come choke the word of God and makes it unfruitful. How many times have you been sitting here and you heard the prophetic word from God, but you were overshadowed with the cares of this world and you allowed what was on your mind to choke the word of God so that you were not able to see it? 
You were not able to receive it. You were not able to understand it because rather than focusing on the word, you were focusing on your circumstances. I want you to hear this from the message. The seed cast in the weeds represent the ones who hear the kingdom news by the overwhelm with worries about all the things that they have to do and all the things that they have to get. Stress strangles what they've heard and nothing comes out of it. What happens when the root of what chokes the word that makes what we've heard unfruitful or cause us to doubt? You've heard it. God used someone to speak prophetically to you about your circumstances and because you were stressed out, you didn't allow the word to saturate into your heart and into your mind and most of all into your spirit. Peterson said stress strangles what was heard and nothing comes out of it. Second Kings chapter 4, I believe could be on the evening news. The commentator would probably warn us that the story is graphic. Why? Because it's the story of a severe famine in the land of Samaria. The pretext, Deacon uh, uh, Mitchell, tells us there was a great famine in Samaria. The famine lasted, Barney, for three years when the city was under siege by the enemy. The Bible says that judgment had come to Samaria. Things became so dreadful that food became scarce that the head of a donkey sold for 80 pieces of silver. People were dying from starvation. Talk to me, somebody. The king rent his clothes and people were sitting in heaps of ashes with sackcloth and ashes as a symbol of mourning concerning the devastation that was going on in Samaria. The king declared this evil was from the Lord and declared that he did not want to wait any longer. The king relinquished his son, gave up his son so that they could dine and have supper. When the woman of God came back and asked him and he asked her about giving up her son, she reneged on the promise. Cannibalism, is called, became an option for many. That's how bad things were. Then out of nowhere, nah. when they felt like they just couldn't handle anymore, then out of nowhere, when they felt like they had reached rock bottom, then out of nowhere, somebody knows what I'm talking about. Has anybody ever had God to come through with the word when you were at the bottom of your barrel, at the bottom of your situation? A lot of people said he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. I just want to pause. I know uh, that Super Bowl is 630 this evening, but those of you who want to give God praise and you know he's an on-time God, why don't you celebrate? He is. Oh, sing said he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there. And he'll be there right on time. Somebody is a witness. And sometimes he does not show up. But he sends a word. I wish I had somebody to help me. He sends a word through the prophet, through the pastor, through the minister, sometimes through our brothers and sisters in Christ who walk with God. I wish I had somebody to help me. Sometimes through an inspirational song that you hear, God has a way of giving us the word that we need at that moment. Are you aware that there are many people who are tensed, stressed during this pandemic, ready to explode, angry, and they are in need of a word from the Lord? The problem is, brothers and sisters, some years ago, many folk would greet you with a cliche, God is good, and God is good. Come on, so they can hear it on Facebook, God is good. And all the time, God is good. Bro Wallace, that works when God is good. But when we think he's not good, talk to me somebody, you know and I know he's always good. But the enemy can trick you and make you hold back on your praise because you think right now he's not good. Even in this pandemic, God is The 
prophet Elijah stepped forward and said, listen to the message of the Lord. I'm going to preach in a minute. This is what the Lord said. By this time tomorrow, in the markets of Samaria, six quarts of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver. And 12 quarts of barley green, I feel this thing this morning, will only cost one piece of silver. If you had gotten that, somebody would have said amen. What Elisha was saying, don't focus on the famine. God said, by this time tomorrow, God knows I wish I had somebody help me. Things are going to do a complete reversal. Y'all didn't hear me. By this time tomorrow. Deacon Fullwood, I'll tell you why they couldn't believe it. Because the famine had lasted for three years. And now the prophet came forth, Mr. Parker, with a word from the Lord. And he said, by this time tomorrow. Can I get somebody to help me? In other words, take your watch off. And if you want to clock watch God, go ahead and do it. By this time tomorrow, God's going to turn your situation around. By this time tomorrow, green will be affordable. By this time tomorrow, there's going to be an abundance of resources. But there's a problem. And here it is. The king's assistant said out of his mouth, I'm so afraid of God that I don't even like reading it. It's blasphemy. He said that couldn't happen even if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. Y'all didn't hear that? It's almost like all of a sudden, God has allowed the prophet to speak a word to the people. And then out of his own mind, talk to me somebody, and out of his own mouth, the king's assistant said that couldn't happen. Even if God opened the windows of heaven. Can I tell you, Deacon Perkins, what his problem was? He was staring at the magnitude of the famine. And he was not in a position to receive what God said. Y'all don't help me in here. Are y'all with me? It's called incredulity. It means that something has been spoken. But you are standing in doubt. Incredulity. It's the state of not wanting to believe something. Help me somebody. Now y'all got to hear this because I want you to hear. Not only did he doubt God, but he doubted the power of God. He doubted the provision of God. And he doubted the messenger of God. Can I talk to somebody? Can I talk to some real folk? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. To say that there's something that God can't do. I wish I had somebody to help me. Can I tell you? He can do anything. Y'all didn't hear me. He can do anything. I said he can do anything. But the king's assistant says even if he opened the windows of heaven, he could not do it. And brothers and sisters, I would argue, Deacon Jenkins, that the problem with a lot of us is we have God in a box. But I want you to open your box. And if you open it, I think you'll see a sticky note from God. I think God would say, I will never fit into your box. I'm bigger than your situation. I, I can handle anything. That's put before me. He said, even if God opened the windows of heaven, he couldn't do it. Whoa. You realize that we are talking about the God? Let me step back from the podium. 
who didn't use his hands in the creation and said, let there be. And there was. Everything in the creation narrative he spoke into existence. And I'll tell you, if he can speak and things move, he can handle us during a pandemic. He handled the situation. I want to read for you what he said again. It makes my heart bleed. I'm going to preach in a minute. That couldn't happen even if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. Can you imagine anyone saying that there's something that God can't do? Is there any situation, Rem Caldwell, that he can't fix? Is there any situation that he can't fix? Is there any sickness that he can't heal? Is there a mountain that he can't move? Is there a problem that he can't solve? Is there anything too hard for God? Pastor, tell us what happened. I'm going to preach in a minute. Doubt crept in and began to choke the word that the prophet has released, had released. And brothers and sisters, anytime doubt creeps in, and if you don't call it what it is and get it out, doubt turns into unbelief. And Reverend Darlene Brown, unbelief is sin. Preacher, unbelief is sin because you are saying that God cannot do what he said he could do. He doubted the power of God. He also doubted the provision of God. He was in essence saying if the Lord would rain down heaven, whatever he poured out would not be enough to handle this crisis. Because there's a famine in the land. Prices are increasing. And all we've heard is about folk dying. Everything is going to change, said the prophet. And it's going to happen by this time tomorrow. Unfortunately, but fortunately, we have persons in the Bible who also doubt it. And like many of us, we are tempted when our circumstances become overwhelming. John the Baptist doubted, called a road preacher. When John the Baptist was in prison, he looked at his circumstances and wondered why Jesus didn't come and rescue him. So he sent word to Jesus and asked Jesus a question. Are you the one or should we look for another? Jesus told the messenger, go back and tell John the Baptist what I said. I am the one who opens blind eyes. I am the one who heals the sick. I am the one who can do anything but fail. Sarah doubted. God said that she was going to give birth to a son in her old age. The Bible says God told Abraham and Sarah that about this time next year, there it is. You will bear a son. Sarah, the Bible says, considering Abraham's body and considering her age and the fact that she was barren, laugh at God. And God asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Is there anything? God knows I wish I had somebody to talk to me. Is there anything? Too hard for God. Preacher, are you closing? No. That's ordinary doubt. C.S. Lewis argues that there are different degrees of doubt. Uh-oh. What do you mean, preacher? He argues that we can take doubt to another level. Talk to us. What do you mean? The evidence is right in the Bible. The Bible says that, that Zechariah, the priest of God, was serving in the temple, going about his normal rituals. When suddenly the angel Gabriel appeared and said, your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth shall bear a son and you shall call him John. The Bible says Zechariah doubted and the angel Gabriel said, because you doubted, your mouth will be sealed shut until after the child is born. 
preacher, where you going? I want to talk to somebody that I hear God said, you are missing your blessings because of your mouth. You're missing what God has for you because you are decreeing and declaring out of your mouth that God can't do what he said he can do. So guess what, Zechariah? You won't have the privilege of telling the fellows in the barber shop your wife is pregnant. You won't have the privilege of telling folk around town your wife is pregnant. Because of doubt and unbelief, your mouth will be sealed until the boy is born and after his circumcision. Preacher, where you going? You ought to know where I'm going. I'm going back to the text. The prophet Elisha told the assistant, said, yes, I'm paraphrasing. It's going to happen. You're going to see it. But you will not be able to partake of it because of your unbelief. Can I get a witness? By this time tomorrow, yes, there's a famine in the land. But by this time tomorrow, yes, the report shows cancer. But by this time tomorrow, yes, your finances are in the red. But by this time tomorrow, I wish I had somebody to help me. By this time tomorrow, can I get a witness? Is there anybody listening that believes that God can turn your situation around? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. If you've got the faith, God's got the power to release it so that the world can see that there is no secret to what God can do. That what he's done for others, he'll do the same for you. Is there anybody in the house have enough faith to go ahead and give God praise that something is about to happen? There's something getting ready to break. The floodgates are getting ready to open. By this time tomorrow, if you believe it, you ought to stand on your feet and give God a praise by this time tomorrow that that I haven't seen will be made possible. By this time tomorrow, God will make a way out of no way. By this time tomorrow. Some years ago, I'm not finished. I share with you J.B. Phillips' book, Is Your God Too Small? Phillips said, many of us, unfortunately, have a Sunday school image of God, and we don't believe that God can move mountains, and we don't believe that God can do anything but fail. But can I tell you this morning, he's able. Have I got at least two witnesses that I tell somebody he's able? The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, there will be enough food, and it'll be at a price that you can't afford. But the man said, no way. Even if God was to open up the windows of heaven, he will not be able to do it. I know somebody is sitting on the edge of their seats and saying, you ought to tell us the rest of the story. I'm glad you know that there's more to the text. After this text, the flow is interrupted. The Bible talks about four lepers who was on the outside of Samaria who were getting ready and preparing to die. But the lepers made up in their mind that they were going to make a move. Can I get somebody to help me? They moved because they believed that if we sit here, we are going to die. If we go in the city, there's a possibility we might die. But there is also a possibility that God is going to see us through. I wish I had somebody to help me. And the Bible says they went into the city. Now you got to get it because I've preached for a number of years. And I've never seen the connection. But Reverend Darlene Brown, when they went into the city, 
they went into the city on the day that the prophet had already declared that there be more than enough. The enemies had left and they were able to receive all of the spoil. Can I guess about to help me? And the Bible says the king told the messenger to stand at the gate. But if you read down to verse 18, it says while the people were coming into the city to get the bread that God had promised, there was a stampede because there were so many people who believed that God had done it that they ran right over him and he died in the streets. Remember what the prophet said. The prophet said, you will see it, but you'll never be able to taste it. I wonder, have I got anybody in the house that you believe that God can do what no other can do? You believe in his power? You believe in his promise? You believe in the message from God? I've got a confession to make on this first Sunday in February. It may shock some of you, but I got to tell you, I am a believer. Y'all don't hear me? I believe that he took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed 5,000. I believe, can I get a witness, that he fed the children of Israel and rained down manna from above. I believe that he went to a wedding and when they ran out of wine, he turned water into wine. I believe that there was a woman suffering with a hemorrhage who said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. I believe that God can do anything he wants to do. I believe he can bless us in a famine. I believe he can make a way. Somebody ought to give him praise. Somebody ought to give him praise. If you know he can, if you know he will, if you know he can, if you know he will. The prophet decreed it and declared it. The king's assistant refused to believe because he was overshadowed with doubt. Y'all sit down in here, you make me nervous. I want to tell you something, and I know I'm going to get a whole lot of feedback from this, but there are a whole lot of folk talking about decreeing and declaring. I want to set the record straight. Elisha said, the Lord says, you cannot decree or declare anything unless it comes from God. Y'all need to hear that. The prophetic word comes from God and God alone. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, God's going to turn it around. Less than 24 hours from now, by this time tomorrow, where there was a shortage, there's going to be an abundance. And the prices will be affordable. This is what the Lord said. Now, if you're listening via Facebook, in your bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, wherever you are, if you believe the word, I want you to stand on your feet. If you believe that God can turn things around, if you believe that God can turn things around, if you believe, but I tell you what we've got wrong, we've got our praise mixed up. We wait until we see it to give God a praise. We got to learn to give God a praise when the word is released. Y'all don't hear me? When the word is, come on somebody, when the word is released, God, I receive it. 
It's mine. It's mine. It's mine for the asking. It's mine. We're blessed today to have Elder Jonathan Parker with us. He's been here as our summers before. And his family told me he was here today. He's coming to the podium in just a moment. Get my sanitizer if you would. But while you're standing, I want to share something with you. And don't lose this. Last Sunday night, Mrs. Henry and I sat down and watched Gail King's interview with Cicely Tyson. Sister Tyson said something that had me almost running around the house. She said, when I was only six years old, six, my mother had me in a carriage, and she was walking down the street, and a lady come up to her and looked at Cicely in the carriage and told the mother, said, that child has a sixth sense. She's going to do great things, and one day she will be blessed financially to take care of you. At age six, she received it. And although her mother didn't believe it, in fact, she said that her and her mother separated, she went to live with a friend because her mother said, you're not going to be an actor. But Cicely said she believed what the lady told her. And then at the production of Sounder, she said her mother was invited to come. And her mother was sitting behind her as they watched it on the screen. And she patted her on the shoulder. Sister said she interpreted the pat as mama saying, I believe now. Don't clap. Uh-uh, don't clap because that's the problem. A lot of us don't believe it until we see it. We got to believe it when the word is released. Come on, somebody. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow. God knows I feel it. I think there's at least three of you that have a by this time tomorrow praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. By this time tomorrow, God's going to release. Hallelujah. A blessing, hallelujah, that you won't have room enough to receive. But I heard God say, if you don't believe it, you can't receive it. The king's assistant saw it because he couldn't, but he was not allowed to taste it. And when all the folk came running and rushing to Samaria, they ran right over him. You see what you missed? Because of unbelief. What are you declaring out of your mouth? And even after it's declared, what are you receiving? Do you believe what Jesus said? Do you believe? One day going into the temple, at the close of his ministry, Jesus looked at that huge building and said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll rise again. It took 46 years to build the temple. And those that were around him said, you mean to tell me you're going to destroy this building? and rebuild it in three days, they had no idea that he was talking about his body. Pastor, was he true to his word? On a Friday evening, he died. But on a third day morning, he got up. Jesus got up. Just like he said he would. I want to read for you just one final verse. Then we would pray. 
Verse 20, when you get home, read it. And so it was. It happened. Just like God said he was. Mm. Pray, preacher. Let me get folk. We're standing in here. Don't you believe? Don't you move if you don't believe. But if you believe in your spirit, ah, thank you, God, that God was speaking to you this morning. I want you to come. There's space, there's room for us to practice social distance. Don't you move if you are doubting. I hope he will. Maybe, perhaps. I want to hear somebody say, God, I trust you that you'll do what you said you'll do. I don't want you to think I'm being ugly. But stay in your seat if there's any doubt. But if you will open up your heart and say, God, I heard your word. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, hallelujah, by this time tomorrow, hallelujah, by this time tomorrow, I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to turn it around. By this time tomorrow. Bless you, sir. Hallelujah. And I know you sing, and I know you can pray, be led by the Spirit, whatever, because you and the Spirit will connect with my Spirit. Yes. And the Lord will be all on one accord. Yes. I can't help it. I got to by this time tomorrow praise. Yes. I feel it. Yes. Down in my soul. Yes. By this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands toward heaven on this morning. Come on, if you really believe the word on this morning, if you really are looking for a miracle, he can do it. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think. All we have to do is believe. He's taking us from shortage to surplus on this morning. From shortage to surplus. He's here to meet every one of our needs on yeah. this morning. Yeah. Just reach up and grab yeah. your miracle on this morning by faith. Just grab it by faith on this morning. Because he's able. No situation too big. No situation too small. He can handle it. Hallelujah. Let's just go before our Father. Eternal God, we come to you right now with thanksgiving in our hearts, with praise on our lips, with worship down on the inside on today, God, because we love you and we appreciate you on today, God. There's nobody that is like you who is likened unto our God. Father, we just love you and we praise you in advance for what you're going to do, what you're going to do within the 24 hours, what you're going to do in the next moment, even before we get to the 24 hours. Father, we just give you all the glory and all the praise, God. Come on in the room, God, and do what only you can do because you specialize in things that seem impossible, God. God, open up the windows of heaven and pour us out so many blessings that we can't even receive on today, God. Father, moving our children, moving our families, move on our jobs, move in the city, move in the state, move in our country. Father, just move right now like never before because we need you on today. You are the master physician. You are our doctor. You are our lawyer. You are our teacher. You are our leader. You're everything that we need and then some on today, God. But Father, we trust you on today. We trust you on today. You've never failed us. You've never disappointed us. You've never let us down. You've never denied us, God. Father, we know that you're not a man that you should lie, neither the son of man that you should even have to repent. If you said it, if you spoke it, it's going to come to pass. And we love you on today, God. Somebody ought to give it praise. 
we love you on today because you're able. We clap our hands signifying that we have the victory, that we are triumphant, that we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. And blessings are coming our way before tomorrow. We're going to live to see it on today. We're going to live to see it happen in our lives. It's going to happen for our children and our children's children and our children's children's children. We believe you because you're able. You're able on today. Come on, somebody just shout, you're able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able to do it immediately. He's able to do it suddenly. He's able to do it spontaneously. He's able on today. He's able. Hallelujah. Just like Joshua and Caleb said, he's well able to give us the victory. And Father, we just adore you. We seal this prayer. Let every heart say, Amen. Exceedingly abundantly above all all you could ask or think according to the power that worketh in you you everybody help me say God God is able to do yeah 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 he's gonna fulfill yeah Every promise. Don't give up on God. Cause he won. No, 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 no. He's able. Come on and clap your hands right here if you know that he's able. He's an able God. Yeah, yeah. He's able. Every promise, every promise he made to you, don't give up, don't doubt, because he won. He's made an investment in you. He's able. Oh. Come on and say, he's able. Yeah, come on and say, oh. When you can't find the words to say, open up your mouth and say, oh. One more time, say, oh. Come on, let it ring out. Come on and let your voices ring out on this morning. One more time, say, oh.
He knew you while you were still in your mother's womb. Don't give up on God. He knows the end from the beginning. Yeah. Come on and just lift your voice and say, he's able. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Let's receive it. Thank you, Elder Parker. Thank you. Let's keep it going, Jimmy. Don't stop yet. I got a message from God, and them call that. I don't know whether y'all remember, but two weeks ago, God said there's going to be a divine reversal. Last Sunday, Kiva and Angela came back with the same song, and Jonathan had no idea, excuse me for saying Jonathan, had no idea what had happened last Sunday. If you have ears to hear, you better hear what God is saying in this time that we're living in. Believe the word of the prophet. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow. Hallelujah. I can't shake it. I can't shake it. I can't shake it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 By this time, tomorrow. Where there was not enough, there'll be more than enough. And it'll be at a price that you can't afford. All they had to do was just run to the city. I wonder, is anybody in the house ready to just run and receive what God has for you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, glory, glory to your name, glory to your name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God said, all you got to do is receive it. And it shall be according to what has been spoken. It shall be according to what has been spoken. It shall be. Hallelujah. It shall be according to what has been spoken. So the rest of the night, if I was you, every time it comes across your mind, i just go ahead and say, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the turnaround. Thank you for the way being made. Thank you for the surplus. Thank you. Hallelujah. When you came inside the church today, you should have been given communion or you could have retrieved it from the table. For those of you who are watching, you can join us as we have virtual communion. We'll give you a moment. God, we ask your blessings upon these sacraments. We pray, oh God, that you would let it be a reminder of the debt that you paid for us, the price that was paid. Help us to never forget that you paid it all. The Bible says, and they took the cup, which represents his body, the true and living God, the New Testament. And he held it up and he blessed it and said, to take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Let us take this time and eat together. And he also took the cup, which represented his blood, 
that was shared for us. He blessed it, held it up and said, this cup, this is what you do in remembrance of me. Would you join me as we drink of the cup together? This ends our worship service. For those of you that are watching via Facebook, it is our prayer that you would join us on Zoom for Sunday morning Bible study. Reverend Quincy David is our Sunday morning Bible study teacher. Join him as we continue to study the word of the Lord. We are preparing now to receive our offering. Ask our deacons if they would come. For those of us that are here, the worship continues. Those of you watching Facebook, 